I think diversity and inclusion is important for the workplace because it unleashes the potential of every employee within the workplace. Um, it's also a competitive advantage for any organization. Um, it brings out the best in others as well as it helps others be at their best. So I think that it's very important to create a culture and foster a culture of inclusiveness and one that embraces his differences, um, whether that's difference in gender, race, uh, problem solving approaches, whatever that difference is, um, being able to embrace that, being able to foster a culture that is open to differences and being able to be a part of a team that brings out the best regardless of who you are, what you are, or how you are, um, I believe um, is critical to the business success um, and to the economic prosperity of any company and organization. I do. I recall quite a few. Um, while at Biogen, I was the co-chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Strategic Council um, for Biogen. Um, as you know, Biogen is a global organization, so it is imperative um, that diversity and inclusion is uh, a part of the everyday operation. It's a part of what an organization does and believes in, as well as Biogen serves a diverse um, patient population um, for those that Biogen serves. I recall uh, diversity and inclusion being not only a value, but a core competency for every employee. And employees were actually, um, it's a part of our performance evaluation since it was a value and since it uh, was, I say was because I'm no longer there, but because it was um, an imperative, um, it was expected that people behaved, led, uh, and deliver it on results every day for those that we served, keeping in mind that we were serving a diverse population, um, that we were to foster a an, an, uh, culture of inclusiveness and, and diversity. And the reason was so that we could create and discover breakthrough therapies for those in need. And innovation comes about when there are many different ideas and different ways of doing things. Within Biogen, we had employee resource network groups. We also had heritage and social activities. So those really acknowledged and highlighted different, um, different cultures, different beliefs. Um, we also um, gave and participated in the communities that we served, which included a very diverse population. While being at Biogen, we also initiated and kicked off a women's innovation network. And that women's innovation network was to celebrate the achievements of female talent uh, within the organization, recognizing many of those were scientists or females in STEM, which I'm so passionate about. Um, so it was a wonderful opportunity to network, to build relationships and mentorships, and also to share and inspire others to know what's possible, though you may be different than the majority of a segment. So the Women's Innovation Network is one that was initiated and one that was near and dear to me because I believe that today's problems and solutions uh, in society, I personally believe they lie within the STEM arena. Um, and I believe that having females uh, at the table, in the laboratory, in the boardroom, on an executive team, uh, in a finance committee meeting, wherever that is in that space, I believe is, is an important part in making sure that we're solving problems and solving problems with considerations for a diverse population, um, whether that's gender, religion, race, or whatever that is. I think that small companies can implement diversity and inclusion into their operation, into their culture, by first making sure that the leadership understands, believes, and values diversity and inclusion. 
and recognizes the impact that it not only has on the deliverables from any organization, but that it has a direct impact on the bottom line. And I think all leadership, as well as the, the stakeholders, shareholders can connect with that bottom line because it matters. So I believe it's important to ensure that the right leadership is uh, recruited, retained, uh, that we attract the right leadership. Um, and then I believe, secondly, it's about modeling the behaviors that we want others to adopt. So it's important for leaders to consistently demonstrate that they value diversity and inclusiveness, that they value different ways to solve problems, that they value differences, and that that is an important part to uh, getting to um, a, a successful outcome. Um, and so I think those are ways to incorporate that at a small organization or at a large organization, but it's surely scalable and it's surely something that doesn't necessarily take um, a huge financial investment. It takes will, it takes courage, it takes passion, and it takes the willingness to do the right thing, even in the face of adversity. I believe and the data shows that the risks are huge. And when I say huge, they have direct implications to the sustainability of an organization. They have direct implication to the financial returns for the stakeholders and shareholders of an organization. And they really have a direct impact on um, an organization being a part of uh, a progressive direction for any sector. So without diversity and inclusion, there is no competitive advantage. Without diversity and inclusion, you will not uh, achieve the market share hoped for. And without diversity and inclusion, it is impossible to have an innovative culture, to have innovative minds that are solving the complex, difficult problems that most organizations deal with today. So I think those who don't acknowledge um, or find value with diversity and inclusion will pretty much get the same status quo um, and will never achieve the heights that are possible. So if an organization wants to be a pace setter, if they wanna grow their market share, if they wanna bring out the best in every employee and create a culture where every employee can thrive, if they wanna have an organization that is full of energy, that is passionate and committed about solving problems, achieving the goals and objectives, and feeling good about coming into work every day, or let's just say 99% of those days, if they want that, then they would definitely be an advocate for diversity and inclusion. They would be a leader recognized for uh, taking a stand for diversity and inclusion, and they would implement diversity and inclusion into their culture. It doesn't have to be a program per se, but it needs to be a way of getting work done. It needs to be a way of connecting to the customers, and it needs to be a way of defining a path for success um, that's going to, you know, leave the organization feeling better and being more energized about something that really has great rewards. I'm Michelle Sanders, Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Administration, and I'd like to invite you to attend the 2017 Workplace Diversity and Inclusion Conference on June 15th in Durham, North Carolina. Now, this conference is going to be a way to continue moving North Carolina forward. And it's also gonna be a way to continue your company, your teams, your organizations on a trajectory for success. So if you'd like to find out great ideas to take back at your workplace, if you'd like to be a part of something really great uh, and gain some networking and also connect to a value that is critical to any business, critical to the success of any team, and critical to your success as an individual and as a community partner here in North Carolina, join me at this conference. We're gonna have great dialogue, we're gonna have a lot of fun, and we are going to diversify and be inclusive in every conversation.